What's up guys? So Disco back again with another raid video. Today we're going to be talking about raid etiquette, aka uh, how you should prepare and plan for a raid and things to do and things not to do, right? <clears throat> so number one, as we're going through here, uh, the first thing in the raid you want to do is establish positions, right? So for the tarmac, the tarmac as a as a general rule, unless you're trying to do speed runs or whatever else, has uh, four basic positions. So you got two forward on the left, two forward on the right, two in the back for the chopper on the left, and two in the back for the chopper on the right. What this entails, so in this case, in this video, I'm on the right hand side, right? So normally what you'll have is on my side over here, you'll have two people going up front and two people hanging back for the chopper. Normally you break off into these positions once the boomers are down. So for example, on the uh, on the right side, you're gonna have two boomers, right? So you wanna have your, uh, your front people basically take out the boomers and then push up to the front where I'm at to take out the threat in the front. While you got a couple people doing security in the back who are waiting for the chopper. The same thing applies to the left-hand side, right? So that way, so you might hear something like, uh, when you're at the beach or something like, okay, uh, uh, John Doe on side A and John Doe on side B, run up, uh, take the boomer and, and whatever, uh, run up to the front and then uh, such and such on A and such and such on B, hang back for the chopper. So that'll, that'll make sure that out of the eight people you got, you're gonna have four on one side and four on the other, that you got uh, the front taken care of and the back taken care of when the chopper comes in, right? <clears throat> So that's, that's the basics of that. The second is to have people set up in your boomer phase, right? Whether you're running a negotiator, uh, whatever you're gonna, whatever you're gonna be doing, right? You got kiters, you got computers, and you got doors. Those are the three basic positions that are gonna be, uh, uh, need, that need to be taken care of when you go through the boomer phase. Who's kiting, who's doing doors, and who are you gonna have for the computers? It's always a good idea to get that set up uh, beforehand or at least uh, b before you're going in so you don't have to waste a lot of time like okay who's going to be doing this and who's going to be doing that um, you know oh, oh I I've never kited before I've never done this or that before which is fine because every raid is not broken down by or every raid does not include people who have done the raid hundreds and hundreds of times and I know more than anybody I've run the raid you know over 1200 times and I'd be an elitist or, or, or a jerk to, to pretend that every single group I run with is full of people who have done the raid like a thousand times, like that, that type of deal, right? Um, most of the raids don't go like that. Um, so you want to make sure that before you start firing that A, everybody knows where they're going and B, that everybody is, is somewhat comfortable in doing that position because some people haven't done certain things, right? So you might have something like uh, uh, maybe this guy has never done a... Uh, a door before this guy's never kited before this guy's never done a computer before right so make sure that you put people for their experience level where they're most comfortable and you know initially because everybody's got to come out of their comfort zone right um, but you don't want somebody to, to continuously be doing one thing or the other because it just it just lessens your uh, your your ability to complete the raid okay so here on the weasel stage right the weasel stage in buddy and lucy um, usually is where there's the most problems because if you're going for the uh, the no gas switch, right? Sometimes you'll have a lot of people that are used to doing seven and one and if you put them on B Explain to them what exactly you're doing Because if you're going for a no gas switch and you got some people over there on 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 side B, right? A lot of these people and it's not it's not their fault <clears throat> But a lot of people have, are used to doing like seven and one and something like that the raid can be run a ton of different ways and you can save yourself a lot of heartbreak by making sure that whoever you have in whatever position completely understands the strategy that you're going to run. So pay attention to the to the raid leader. When I'm in a raid uh, a ton of times and I'm not the leader, I'll just say, hey, wh whatever you're doing, let me know. You don't want to have people uh, disagreeing and bickering about what strategy is the best, right? Because I have my personal opinions, but sometimes I hop into groups where they're used to doing it a certain way, right? So I'm just like, hey, it's your, it's, it's your show. We'll run it that way, right? But make sure everybody knows what you're doing. Um, Buddy and Lucy is where a huge amount of, of, of people end up wiping at because of the bars, right? So on Buddy and Lucy, 
the, the, the way you normally run it is a three five a three on lucy and five on buddy because buddy is a stronger dog so allocate your team members in a, in a certain way so in this group in this uh, example this is going to be a white okay and it's not a white because of ability per se but it's because everybody's not on the same page right because you have to be watching their bars and you can't let buddy get out of that plate in the middle some people might be used to running it one way others used to running it another but when there's a little bit of uh when there's discrepancies between how it's going to be run you can find yourself in a shit show or struggling to get through a boss that's actually pretty easy to get through right for example buddy and lucy all you have to do is watch the bars but if you have people running different strategies in the raid right they might with the, with the group that they were in they might be for example used to taking them into the rooms right or another group might be uh used to doing like a one shot uh, a one shot buddy build or another player for example but what you can't do and what you want to avoid and this is this is honestly what i hate about like elitist players right they just got out of a raid with 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 one group right who did a one shot buddy build right so they come in there with a uh they come in there with like a uh, a nemesis or a regulus build with an Achilles pulse, right? But they they haven't they haven't checked this out with the rest of the people in the raid, right? They're just running in there like, well, this group I was with did it that way, so now I'm gonna come in here and as soon as Buddy comes out, I'm gonna pulse him with the Achilles and I'm gonna fire a regular shot into his leg, right? All that's actually gonna accomplish is just fucking the team over. Now, if everybody is on the same page, right? Then there's no problem. But what you don't want to do is um be the one who doesn't ask beforehand or not listen to the raid leader and if you're leading a raid you should definitely make sure everybody understands the strategy you're going to use going into any given boss because you have what you'll end up with is a lot of people with a lot of abilities who go into a boss and because the roles aren't clearly defined or because the strategy is not clearly defined you got a bunch of individuals you got a bunch of eyes in the word team right and so this guy's doing that this guy's doing the other thing and what just ends up happening is you can overcharge the dogs or whatever happens could lead to a failure um and that's that's basically what you want to avoid the next thing we're going to talk about is the plates at razorback so there's a couple ways you can do the plates um you can do them faster you can do them slow right you can also have damage phases doing front back front back front front back back uh, back front back front back back front front you get the idea right um, now back to being on the same page make sure that before you hop out the window that your damage phases are clearly defined to avoid confusion after you actually start avoid having people say wait are we doing the back or are we doing the front I thought we were doing the you know I thought we were doing the back on the first lift this kind of thing because it just it just takes up time and it causes confusion the second thing is when it comes to doing plates either fast plates or slow plates um, make sure that everybody knows that as well so for fast plates it's basically as soon as you, you you know you jump on your plates it charges you do your grenade your crossbow you go to damage and essentially as soon as those those two grenades hit um from razorback once it closes up you're basically going right back on the plates um to avoid things where you are situations where you have people saying oh i didn't know we we're getting on plates yet or, or wait i'm not ready make sure that everybody knows the, the style of plates that you're doing and also where the positioning is going to be for the uh, for the damage on Razorback. So depending on what builds people have, you may have people from uh, plates two and three coming forward on the first lift, right, to ensure that you get the damage. And then for the second, third, and fourth lifts, they don't have to they don't have to move, right? They can all stay in the back, and, and everybody stays in the front, and vice versa. So make sure you got that defined. Secondly, if uh, you're a plate person. Um, and you hear the drone guy or whoever's calling the plates for you guys say, okay, on plates in three, two, one, get in. Don't wait until he says get in it, to tell the people that you're not ready. So if you happen to be going to get ammo, right, and you hear somebody starting the count and they say three, two, one on plates, don't be the guy who says, oh, wait, hang on, I'm not on plates yet, while you're still over at the ammo box, right? Make sure that. Uh, when you hear somebody counting plates on plates, you say, hang on, hang on, you know, or, or, I'm not there yet. So give me a slow count, something to that effect. Um, so just so that everybody can stay on the same page and you prevent, uh, people hopping on the plates and then having to get off, like, because you know, you, your, your count is off, right? 
because when the plates charge, you have like a 20 percentage uh, uh, buffer, right? So it starts from zero, it's going to 100%. If all the people are not on plates by that 20%, right? So somebody gets on and, and they're at zero when the other three people are at 22 or 23%, it's going to cause grenades to fire at all the plates. So make sure that uh, you give people a heads up if you're going to be late getting onto the plate uh, to avoid a bunch of unnecessary heartbreak. That's basically all I got for the raid etiquette. Um, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Feel free to uh, join the Discord, like, subscribe, all that good shit. And uh, we'll see you in a couple raids. Take it easy, guys.